Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. Today is Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012. My name is Frank Fortunato. There will be no broadcast tomorrow, July 4th. It is Independence Day in the United States. More bad news coming out of the British banking sector. Yesterday, the uh, chairman of the board of Barclays resigned. Today, the chief executive of Barclays resigned. And it's expected now that the chief operating officer is probably going to resign later today or tomorrow. It's the trifecta. The CEO resigned. Robert Diamond admitted intense political and investor pressure from Barclays' involvement in rigging the LIBOR interest rate benchmark. Uh, the United Kingdom government announced this afternoon, actually yesterday afternoon, that a series of inquiries into ethical standards in the banking industry would begin in Parliament immediately. The UK Serious Fraud Office said it was considering criminal prosecution against those who attempted to rig the LIBOR rates. The big British drug maker GlaxoSmithKline has agreed to plead guilty to misdemeanor criminal charges and pay a $3 billion settlement to the United States government in what officials describe as the largest case ever of health care fraud. The agreement yesterday still needs court approval, but it would resolve allegations that Glaxo broke American laws in marketing two popular drugs for unapproved uses. Today, there's a front page story in the New York Times. It says, U.S. adds forces in Persian Gulf, a signal to Iran. According to the article, uh, written by David Sanger and others, the United States has added fighter jets as well as naval assets. Uh, the jets capable of striking deep into Iran if the standoff over its nuclear program escalates. One policymaker who did not uh, agree to be quoted said that when President Obama says there are other options on the table beyond negotiations, he means it. The most visible elements of the buildup are Navy ships designed to vastly enhance the ability to patrol the Straits of Hormuz and to reopen the narrow waterway should Iran mine it. The Navy has doubled its minesweeper numbers in the region to eight. The message to Iran from a senior Defense Department official is, don't even think about it. Don't even think about closing the strait. We'll clear the mines. Don't even think about sending your fast boats out to harass our vessels or commercial shipping. We'll put them at the bottom of the Gulf. Since late spring, stealthy F-22 and F-15C warplanes have been moving into two separate bases in the Gulf to bolster the combat jets already there. These additional attack aircraft give the American military greater capability against coastal Iranian batteries, as well as the ability to reach deeper into other targets inside Iran. Well, the Mid-Atlantic in the United States is still in big trouble. 1.8 million people remain without electricity from the weekend storms. The death toll is now up to 22. The uh, Friday evening storms moved quickly across the region with little warning. Utility companies had to wait for days for extra crews traveling from as far away as Quebec and Oklahoma. And when the crews arrived there, there was so much debris that had to be cleared in order to get to the electricity lines that many of them didn't even begin work until yesterday. The temperature is still hot. The uh, stable of small cap listed Lloyd's reinsurers has now dwindled to only two. CNA has completed its uh, takeover of Hardy. Hardy has announced that it will delist. So uh, after the uh, delisting of Omega by Canopius, that leaves uh, Nove as potentially the sole representative left in the small reinsurance listed sector in London. So as far as Omega and Nove, but it seems that that'll be uh, Omega will be delisted after the Canopius acquisition goes through. A front page article in the Insurance Day today by Richard Banks talks about how the increasing flows of capital into the reinsurance industry is probably most responsible for the flattening of premium rates. Everybody had been hoping that with the 2011 disasters, premium rates were going to go up. Well, they haven't. In fact, Willis Ree is reporting that in some cases, uh, buyers with loss-free programs, even in areas of peak exposure, have managed to retain rate reductions on the July 1st renewals. The Willis report said that not just cat bonds have been the recipient of new capital. Uh, workers' compensation cat bonds and existing reinsurers and sidecars have been the recipient of the new capital. The new capital is, of course, welcome. Anytime new capital comes into the industry, that's a good thing, but concerns remain over the durability of the highly fungible capital. 
As Willis says, much of the capital is untested and conditioned by investor reaction to a major catastrophe event. Potential volatility is heightened by single source investors versus funds or sidecars comprised of multiple investors. Translation, if there's a hurricane or an earthquake, this new capital will be lost and investors will be very unhappy. That's the nature of insurance though. More problems in China. The government is cracking down on protesters in a central Sichuan city after riot police clashed yesterday with uh, hundreds of protesters who are protesting the construction of a new metals plant. In unusually strong language, the uh, city police in the 400,000 person city of Shifang warned citizens today that they would be severely punished if they continued their illegal protests over the construction of the Honda Company copper alloy plant, uh, which is being protested because of environmental concerns. You may recall that in uh, 2010 in San Bruno, California, a suburb of San Francisco, a gas line exploded, destroying 38 homes and killing eight people. The Pacific Gas and Electric Company, which owns that gas line, petitioned the California regulatory uh, body yesterday for a $2 billion rate increase over the next three years. They want to use that extra money to accomplish a major overhaul of its gas distribution and electrical systems. According to a review by the utility, more than 200 of its high-pressure transmission pipelines still have sections riddled with vulnerable seam welds, which is the exact failure that caused the San Bruno explosion. The company went on to say that there are a total of 239 problematic pipeline segments spanning a total of 47 miles through northern and central California. They were all at risk for failure because of their age and the company's previous practice of pressurizing the lines above legal limits. Wow, that's not a particularly good idea. I hope uh, no one watching lives on top of any of those lines. We will not be broadcasting tomorrow. Happy July 4th. We will see you again on Thursday. Thank you for watching.